Hi everyone, my name is Jade Calvert. I own and operate Calvert and Associates Canadian Immigration Services. We're a full-service Canadian immigration firm located in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to talk about implied status and what implied status means, when it applies, and how it affects you and your immigration status. So Immigration Canada, I have the definition here, so it's when a temporary resident, um, so their stay of, as a temporary resident is extended by law until a decision is made, and this is outlined in the regulations of the Immigration Refugee Protection Act. Um, so such a person, it says, is considered to have implied status as a temporary resident during that period. So you might say, great, what does this mean? So, uh, implied status occurs, as the, as the regulations say, when someone applies to extend their status before their current status ends. So this is for all temporary residents, whether that be a visitor visa, a study permit, a work permit. Um, so when you're issued those permits, they'll have an expiration date. And if you want to extend your status, you have up until that last day of the permit to extend your status. So that means if your work permit expires on October 17th, 2019, as long as you apply to extend that permit um, for on the 17th or before, you are under what's called implied status. And so you can you have the same status as your original permit until there's a decision made on the new application. It's important to note that with implied status, you can keep doing whatever you are doing. So say, for example, you are studying and you apply for another study permit. As long as you're applying for the exact same type of permit with the same conditions, you can actually continue to do whatever you're doing. So this is really helpful for students at colleges or university. If their work permit or study permit um, expires mid-semester, they can apply to extend that study permit without it affecting their ability to study uh, during that term. Where things change a little bit is if you're changing your conditions of your temporary status. So for example, if you're going from a um, visitor to a worker, so you can't do that, you have to apply from outside of Canada. Uh, if you're going from a student to being a worker, um, depending on, if you're applying for a postgraduate work permit, it gives you a implied status, um, but if you're not eligible for a postgraduate work permit, it gives you implied status, but you can't continue working. So the implied status applies in very specific uh, situations. So if you're keeping the same conditions, you definitely have implied status and can keep doing what you're doing. If you're changing your status as well to a different type of temporary status, it will really depend under which program you're applying. A lot of people ask me about implied status and the international experience class. So that's working holiday visas and young professionals. So it's very important to know that uh, you cannot benefit from implied status under the Working Holiday Visa or Young Professionals program. Lots of people are here on their first Working Holiday Visa. Their country allows them to participate again, either in the same category or under Young Professionals. You can't extend it to keep yourself here. Um, so it doesn't give you implied status if you've applied for a new uh, Working Holiday Visa. You generally need to leave the country and re-enter. Um, or sometimes we use the change of status to a visitor record uh, to make it so that the person is able to stay in Canada with status. Again, implied status, but it's not an extension of their work visa. Um, so it really depends. So with the international experience class, again, you can't extend it, but there are things you can do to stay in Canada while you're waiting on your new visa. Another thing I'll just touch on with the international experience class, a lot of people will come and start working for an employer and then they'd like to get another work permit but they're required to get a labor market impact assessment before getting that work permit. So this is a, an instance where you actually can benefit from implied status when you're a, uh, on an IEC visa. So for example, if you 
are going to continue working in the same occupation with the same employer um, that you're working in now on your international experience class visa and they have an LMIA for that same position, same employer. Um, as long as you've applied for your work permit before your current IEC visa ends, you actually can continue working under implied status until there's a decision on that work permit. Uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on where we're bridging open work permits, it's not quite implied status, but it's, it's similar. Um, so when you've applied for permanent residency and you're here on any kind of work permit, as long as you've had your permanent residency application submitted and approved in principle, so for express entry, that just means you've submitted, submitted an application. Um, for paper-based applications, you need to have been approved in principle by Immigration Canada. As long as you have that approval for, um, from Immigration Canada for your PR application, you can actually get what's called a bridging open work permit. So that's for people whose work permits are expiring, and then you can bridge that work permit until your permanent residency is approved, letting you stay in Canada and continue working uh, for the same employer. For more information on implied status, you can visit our website at calvertimmigrationservices.com or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us online at our website. Thanks very much.